or a more Bitcoin Cash or Dash or any other um, blockchain uh, um, token, um, I send it to you, I verifiably, mathematically no longer have it. And that is a revolution among five or six other things that that enables. Beautiful. What would you add to that, Brock, for the audience here so they can start to tune into what is this and why is it important in their lives? Yeah, so the internet. What is the internet? Simply put, I would describe it in three words as a data transport protocol. It's a system for moving information. The problem is, it's an insecure data transport protocol. The internet is broken. And it's not anyone's fault. There's no one really to blame when the internet was first being designed. We didn't have the processing power to make chips to be able to run the types of cryptography that was necessary to make it secure. And we kept building things on top of it and on top of it and on top of it and on top of it. And so what's happening is the blockchain is enabling what's going to be a secure data transport protocol. The problem is the blockchains are still in their prototyping phases and haven't achieved scalability. Um, you know, but uh, at least one of those blockchains will have done that on June 1st of next year, uh, known as EOS. And um, uh, you'll have a scalable blockchain at that point. And you know, we like to think of that as essentially the launching of the new internet. And what happens is the internet today is only living up to a very small amount of its potential. A very small amount of it because of that insecurity problem. That security problem is massive. It prevents us from doing so much. When the internet becomes secure, you're going to see the opportunities for what's possible in this world become something exponential. The internet's going to be 10 times more than it's ever been. And that's just around the corner. Excellent. Thank you, guys. So let's come down here um, and talk about what's happening in the ICO space. Let's start with you, Ryan. Well, it's interesting. It's, uh, with ICOs, we're taking a lot of the, um, the security aspects and the, the money aspects, and we're um, applying it to um, everybody who participates in the in the value chain. So, uh, with um, ICOs, you're you're creating ecosystems in which every all of the incentives, all the participants are actually aligned for a change. This is a really new a really new concept for everybody's incentives to be aligned uh, aligned, and so. The participants in the communities around ICOs, um, owning the, the tokens, uh, have an incentive to get other people to join it. And so they have an incentive to increase the network effects because it increases the value of the coin. Um, and I think this is just, this is really what is kind of the dawn of the, the new age, being able to really uh, apply that financial value um, to it. And I think this, this really kind of goes into the, the social good aspects of it uh, as well, where people can be incentivized to do things that are uh, good you know, uh, for themselves and good for the world at the exact same time, uh, as opposed to it just being, for example, a, a donation. You get a feel-good effect, but it's not the same as incentivizing people with dollars. Um, and so we're seeing this, just, a huge, um, just a huge number of companies that are, have found application on the blockchain for things that were um, done not as well without the blockchain. Um, for example, um, you know, there's there's a, a site called VinChain, which is um, dealing with the uh, vehicle identification numbers and, and the entire vehicle history of, of a car. Um, putting the information on the blockchain, where, blockchain where it's immutable and it cannot be changed, allows us to get away from a situation that we have right now, where literally you could um, accidentally buy a stolen car because the data is just not there. And everybody who buys the tokens, everybody who participates, everybody who puts data into it or gets data out of it is benefiting in some way. Um, and so that's what we're seeing across thousands and thousands of companies. And how about with you, Emily? Um, you know, at DNA, I would say we have about um, 50 new companies coming to us every month. Um, and those are people that just fill out intake forms. And then of those companies, we meet with about 20 of them. And of that, we probably pick one to work with. So it just shows that how many people are trying to get into the space and trying to move into the space. But the ones that we're actually working with, that we're looking at, like, that number actually is significantly smaller. Um, and so we are seeing, and I think the other thing that I would say about it is about six months ago, the market changed a lot. So we used to have um, utility tokens that you know their entire raise would be on 100 million, 200 million dollars. And 
and that just no longer exists. Like we're looking at closer to $20 million for your utility token. I think the sky's still kind of the limit for a security token, but um, on the utility token side, like we're just not seeing the same market that we saw six months ago. Christopher, maybe you can get into the utility security as well in, in, in this. Yeah, I, I've seen a big change in the market too. I'm going to resonate with that. And, and a lot, it's been a Me Too craze a bit. And, you know, we're seeing a ton of vetting vetting out that we didn't have to do a year ago that we're having to do to filter through the quality of different ventures, largely due to business models. There's a lot of business models that are coming out of the woodwork that probably wouldn't work in the real world. That that believe they can work you know, with an ICO or being on the blockchain. Um, on the other hand, huge problems are getting solved, right, at the same time. And so you've got to be alert for those, and usually, you know, like with the Equifax breach, you know, half of America, maybe all of it, was affected by that. And just bringing to, to the forefront of the importance of having control of your personal identity and all that stuff, which, again, we're dealing with great, really focused business models. Um, people are struggling with the securities versus the utility, uh, and so is the SEC. I mean, they're cracking down now, starting with the, the scam artists. Just this, this week on the Wall Street Journal, I think it came out yesterday, they, the SEC's cracking down on some Canadian ICO scams. Um, people are struggling with wanting to make it a utility, and it sort of walks and quacks like a duck, and it really, it's kind of a duck. Um, and, you know, people also don't understand that, that um, the differences and why it's probably better to be a security anyway, but like everyone else complies. So, like, um, but, but there's also an ethos around that. It's just like before I go into the, anything technical, which I think we could do later in a later question. Um, we're seeing a lot of crypto conscious stuff. We've sort of coined the phrase crypto conscious clients because we've got crypto clients that don't give a damn, and then we now we've got this whole emergence of people trying to change the world, and that's really exciting. It's a new frontier, and the possibility of unique self-organizing communities around the world that's completely different. You, anybody here remember like Second Life and GeoCities from back in the day when you were kids? Right, you had to like go online, yeah, yeah, like we represented like the first people got married on Second Life. And, and now you could like be, we're in real life folks, like this is a whole new world, it's so exciting. So um, anyway, we'll, we'll go into detail later. Do you guys have anything to add to that to help the audience gain a bit of a deeper understanding about their issues and businesses? Yeah, yeah it, the, the point I'd make is, <clears throat> I like to call an ICO an initial community offering because everything that you're building is community and the path forward, the path to making the right decision is actually pretty easy. Um, it begins with not saying, can I do that? Um, you know, the question is, should you do that? And, and you get to the answer by always asking the question, why? Why am I going to do something? And if you always ask yourself why, the right answer as to what you should do will almost always be revealed to you. If you ask yourself the question why. And the other thing in this space is it's about building community. And in building community, when you're asking yourself, okay, how should I go about this? Should I be a utility token or should I be a security token? The answer is you should do whatever is best for your community, always. And if you're always living a life in service of your community, uh, you will almost always do everything right. Yeah, I would say that um, there's been this sort of, particularly on the West Coast, uh, since uh, some of the SEC statements and even cocktail party statements that all ICOs are securities, there's no such thing as a token, a uh, utility token, and that's absolutely not true. Just came from the token summit yesterday, some of the top lawyers in the field said, that they were actually with the SEC prior, said, we feel comfortable with the you know kind of vague rules that the SEC has, because for the most part, they haven't changed anything. I mean, if it quacks like a bar of gold, it's a commodity. And um, you actually do yourself a disservice by taking something that is logically more of a commodity, it is a useful token. Um, because otherwise, you know, what, what you don't have is just because it's a token instead of a piece of plastic that is treated differently. Uh, the example I like to give is wine futures. Gosh, they must be regulated by the SEC. They have the word futures and people actually give them to Rothschild to make money because they're gonna hold on to the wine for a few years. Um, Rothschild uses them to plant their crop. Um, they're making money on it. You have an expectation of making money. Is it regulated by the SEC? No, because of the Howey test, which is what um, determines if something is an SEC from 1940s law, 
you have to pass all four of these points, and the point that wine and most of the utility tokens um, get by on is, does it have utility? In the case of uh, um, buying Petrus or, or uh, Chateau Rothschild, um, is you can drink the wine. You can live in the condo, you can look at the art. The fact that you expect to make money of it does not make it a security. Thank you for getting the record straight. But always get your own legal advice as it relates to any of this stuff. The implications of messing up on the monetary side of things in many countries in the world are either life in prison or the death penalty. And so make sure you are well advised. There is zero room for error. So let's talk to the lawyer on the panel.